Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Foxier Mix. This is Foxier's attempt at the all-in-one HD recorder and FPV solution all through a single camera and they have done it different compared to everybody else and I like different. So with the run cam split we have got the mini version and then the full size version and Fox here have just said no we're gonna have both in the same version so you can see we've got a 30 by 30 mounting stack holes here but we can also break this off and we have a 20 by 20 mounting hole so these are a M3 size hole and these are a M2 which is usually the standard and we have the camera up the front here I believe it's available in various different colors the only thing I'm not too sure about is how the camera connects because it just tension fits there's nothing keeping that on there so I guess you could use a bit of hot glue to keep that on there but I have to say it's on there quite tight so it would take a pretty hefty crash to lift that off but it could definitely happen I would say so we have got two ways that we can connect this to our copter we've got this harness here but we've also got individual solder pads as well so in its form like this with the 30 by 30 stack size it weighs 20 grams with the harness now I'm gonna have to use perhaps some pliers to break this off because I'm gonna be using it in the 20 by 20 form and what's interesting is we have this button here that's also gonna have to break away from the board so this is going to be your start and stop record button but if we break that off we need another button so they have provided it there and I really like that so as I mentioned earlier we've got this harness here which is a 4 pin 1.25 pitch JST connector and I think it's repurposed from a VTX actually because if we take a look at it we have got these two extra wires coming off here which suggests that it would power your camera from the VTX so this would plug into probably one of their VTX's this would power up your camera and then this would be the VBAT sensor so I would guess it would be very unlikely that your flight controller has got this connector for this to plug straight in so we might have to do some soldering and there is a little bit of inconsistency as well if I bend this wire back here so it says that we have got the on-screen display and then the video and then the ground and the ground is shared with the controller I hate that Foxier do that just don't do that Foxier it really complicates things and then it says that we've got the VCC and it says from 5 volts to 17 volts now on the box that it came with it says that it can go up to 24 volts so I'm not sure what that's about it could be that there is a regulator or something going through here and if you use the solder pads it bypasses that but it does say 17 volts on there instead of 24 so not too sure about that but anyways let's talk about some more statistics so it does 1080p 60 it's also got an on-screen display as well which is why we've got a V sensor so you can connect the V bat from your battery lead or flight controller and have that come through to the camera if your flight controller doesn't have an on-screen display like if you're running KISS or something like that However, I'm going to be putting this on a beta flight quad, so I'm hopefully going to be able to disable that. And you currently do that by using this board. Now, if we flip the board 
underneath you can see we've got the micro SD card slot here it takes up to a 64 gigabyte card I would recommend a class 10 and a U3 you've got a built-in microphone here which is nice but we've also got some solder pads here and the instructions don't refer to them so yeah you get these instructions here both in Chinese and English but nothing is mentioned about them so we've got a TX and an RX pad on here so potentially we may have an updated firmware that could perhaps use the same protocol as Runcam controls because the problem that we've got at the moment I believe is that Betaflight have basically said no more protocols so we've got the Runcam camera controls so the Cadex Turtle has the TX and RX but you can't use it and so has this I believe I think there's also a PWM option with this guy as well so you could trigger it from using your receiver however there's no documentation about that either perhaps you could connect up the RX pad to your SBUS line and then use one of your channels to at least start and stop the recording but I can't confirm that at the making of this video the camera end of it seems to be longer than all of the others we've got a lens cap here and it does appear to be a M12 lens I think for me that could be a good thing because I'm going to attempt to fit it to this Lisam RC LS X140 and some of you pointed out in my review of this thing I completely got it wrong you only need to connect it up as a camera and this copter's got a built-in VTX into its flight controller and for some reason I thought I needed to tap into the VTX but of course you don't you only need to tap into the camera so I should be able to transplant this into here quite nicely but I do think the camera will stick out that could be a good thing though because I don't want to get the props in shot and these props do come forward slightly despite it being a freestyle copter so that could be a good thing although it might mean that the camera is not protected I'm not too fussed about that as long as I get the props out of the shot so we get given a lot of other stuff in the package we have got a adapter from a full-size camera to a 19 millimeter micro sized camera and we also have got this metal mounting bracket which I don't think anyone uses these days they're really difficult to install without getting loads of vibrations we've also got a SD card protector so that is gonna sit on your stack and it's gonna stop the micro SD card from pinging out just like Runcam have so that's pretty cool that you get that I already mentioned the controller board which you are going to need whether it is through this connector here or whether you solder this connector direct to the board because we have no other way to control the on-screen display we have got all of these standoffs so look at this we have got M2 times 4 and those look like O-rings and we've got M3 nylon standoffs without the screw so it accepts a screw both sides so it's basically a big nut then we've got M3 standoffs with the screw we've got M2 again without the screw so basically a big nut again and then we've got M2 with the screw I don't think they've provided any nuts but I don't think that's going to be a problem because what I'm going to do is lift the flight controller and VTX up a level 
and put the mix in the middle that is just so that I can get this antenna a little bit higher because I'm top mounting this copter and it will give me a little bit more clearance of the antenna from the battery and won't block the signal and hopefully I'll get an even better video feed so that's pretty much everything you get in the box other than the manual which I already mentioned and you get given a little card here as well and I think this is just for feedback and yeah the box that it comes in you get various little bags and the lens cap and all these bits of foam and a little box that all of that stuff came in so what I need to do next is remove the 30 by 30 part of this board so that I can fit it to my copter So that wasn't as easy as I was hoping. I guess it's got to be fairly strongly attached if you want to keep the 30 by 30 size. But we have got components that are so close to these bridges here that I don't really want to cut them off. And it also feels like it's putting pressure on the board as well. So hopefully this thing is still going to work. So I've taken all of this apart and there is some good news so far because the wire from the ESCs to the flight controller is very long and tucked underneath so if I did want to extend this upwards I could. The only thing I don't know is this is the camera here and we've got the ground labelled and we've got the video in labelled but it doesn't mention whether this is 5 volt or VCC so I'm going to have to check that because I'm not sure what the BEC is rated to on this and of course I want to make sure that we can provide enough current for the mix so I'm going to need to desolder this I think and then power it up and see what voltage that it's putting out and whether I can actually use it in conjunction with the mix or whether I need to take the power straight from the battery line. I might install a capacitor as well because I have a feeling that we're going to get some noise. There wasn't any noise from standard however usually when you put all of these boards together with regulators and things it usually results in noise so while this is apart I might do that as well. Okay so I have desoldered or desoldered the video wires. I'm going to plug a battery and I've got my fluke multimeter here and I want to see what this is outputting so I'm going to have to be very careful because First of all, this is very hot because it's got the built-in VTX, but the pads are very close together. So that's the ground pad, and then that's the voltage pad. Shaky hands. Oh, 5 volt. So, yeah, it's actually using the onboard BEC, which is rated at 1 amp. And I think at 5 volt, the mix uses 700 milliamps. So, oh, it's going to be a close call. I think I might try it, you know. Let's take the risk because if we can tap into that onboard back, then it's an extra layer of filtering that maybe will give us less video noise through to the FPV feed. So the board already has some fairly hefty ceramic capacitors in there but a low ESR capacitor wouldn't go amiss it's just whether it will actually fit because that's the underside of the board I'm going to try and have a go anyways Okay so 330 microfarad 25 volt low ESR capacitor just about fits but let's see if the rest will now. 
Okay, so I've moved along a little bit, so we've got the mix in the middle there with the micro SD card protector. I had to cut down the provided standoffs because they were a little bit too long for this top plate that's going to go on here so I had to cut down the screw part of the standoffs and also the screw part of the original standoffs because these sat too tall for my top to go in place. I've decided to use the connector because it's the easiest way and I think it would be difficult to desolder this connector and I've got the video, the 5 volt and the ground hoping that the back of the flight controller is going to be enough to power everything up and I've also removed the camera from the front and my idea is to tuck this wire at the back. I've also gotten rid of the cable ties from the receiver and I flashed the RSSI version of the firmware to the XM Plus because that wasn't done. So really all I have to do now is put this all back together. So everything has gone back together and I've managed to achieve what I want to achieve so far. So we've got the mix board in the middle and we've got the micro SD card protector installed. Then above that we've got the F4 flight controller and VTX combo and that leaves just enough space for my battery strap. Then on a cable tie I've got the linear antenna that came with this Bind and Fly model and unfortunately the antenna isn't very long. Ideally I'd want it coming out of the back but it's just not long enough for that so I'd have to purchase a longer one if I wanted to do that. However, because it's using a micro UFL connector you only get so many connects and disconnects before this wears out so that's a concern of mine so I'll see how this performs I've managed to get it quite high up because I'm top mounting the battery and I don't want the battery to block the signal of course when it's hovering it's not going to do that but it might do that when it's in forward flight so we'll have to see how that performs then for the camera I've actually had to reverse it that is because the ribbon connector here was rubbing against the top plate and the camera and with all the vibrations that go on when flying I wasn't happy about that but you can flip it in the software so that's not too much of a problem. Another thing that I had to do was clean a bit of dirt from the sensor and the way that you do that is there are four screws on the back of the camera and that removes this whole front and housing don't try and unscrew the lens because it looks like they use a special tool to do that and then don't use anything like a cotton board or anything like that because that's just going to add more dust instead get one of these air blowers and that sorted that problem out so as I mentioned I removed the antennas from the back and I've rerouted them on the arms hopefully that's going to give more space for the battery and then lastly we've got the extension cable coming out of the back so that I can use the program board and once I'm finished programming then I can push that neatly in there or get it out if I ever need to change any of the settings okay so I've got the controller connected and I'm gonna plug a battery in and we should get a picture through to the DVR. Now I've got it set to 16 by 9 and auto recording and there's an SD card in and if you try and play with any of the settings while it's recording then nothing will happen so I'm gonna have to stop the recording by pressing the button and then I should be able to press the center button and then access the menu so we've got movie size so we can do 1080p 60fps which is what I'm going to be using we can do 1080p 30 and then 720p 120fps and 720p 60fps but I'm going to be sticking with that and then we've got the exposure value 
Now it's set to minus 0 0.3 out of the box for some reason, so I'll keep it at that and we'll see how it performs. So I think to exit the menu it is to the left, yeah that's right. Then white balance, so we've got auto, daylight, cloudy, various different options but I'm going to keep it on auto. Then we've got metering mode. So that's for the dynamic range and it was set as this multi option so I'm just going to leave it as that. Then why dynamic range is on. We've got loop video off. We've got auto record on and voice recording on so that's the microphone. Field of view so I've got it on wide. I think it was set as wide but you can change that if you like but I always like a wide field of view while I'm flying but I guess if you want to do more cinematic stuff then you can change this and screen ratio I'm gonna go with 16 by 9 because it crops the video feed when you go 4 by 3 so I'm gonna be using some 16 by 9 goggles with that then we've got the on-screen display so that is the on-screen display built into the camera and I've got that off because this copter's got Betaflight on-screen display I don't think there's anywhere in these settings where you can change the craft name so it just says Foxeer if you leave it on so we've got invert mode which I've got as on because the camera is mounted upside down then TV mode I've got as NTSC and it's kind of known that NTSC has a lower latency I guess that is just because it's a slightly lower resolution or should I say less number of TV lines light frequency I've got as 50 Hertz because I'm in Europe so that's for artificial lights so the electricity frequency it's to stop flickering happening if you are flying indoors and control mode this is interesting can you see flight control and PWM but no information on that at the making of this video auto boot so I've got it as on because I want it to boot up as soon as it's plugged in and then format so I guess that's format the SD card system so you can do a factory reset but I don't want to do that I've got the copter beeping at me because the voltage is dangerously low but that's all of the settings so language we've just got English Chinese and Japanese and that is the menu okay let's first take a look at some of the HD footage and the first thing I noticed is that we've got a lot of fisheye effect in fact if you look in the corners of the screen you can even see some of the lens so that definitely needs addressing let's take a look at some of the DVR footage now there is some noise in the form of lines but that's always there so the fact that I fitted a capacitor I don't think that's coming from the ESC's I think it's coming from the back so it might be interesting to actually connect this guy up to the battery terminals and see if we still get that because becks themselves can cause noise if it's a switching beck. Now you can hear the audio as well so that's coming from the microphone and we're getting a lot of distortion now that could be because I didn't put a muffler over the top of it. One thing that is clear though is that this Lisam RC Copter is an absolute beast. It couldn't even make a dent in the power adding what 20 grams or right, 15 grams because I didn't use the camera that it came with which is probably about 5 grams so 15 grams of extra weight this thing has got so much power it's incredible but yeah I still think there is some work to do with this one. We've got the props in shot as well. Now I imagine that if I used the medium or the narrow setting then I could get rid of that. So I'll probably have a try at that. One thing that I was pleased 
about though is that there is no jalo, probably because it's mounted on a carbon fiber frame and you tend to get less jello. The sun is out, it's just showing through the clouds and I've experienced jello in situations like this but just look at the power of this thing, it's absolutely crazy and yeah so I'll link that in the below as well and one thing that doesn't seem to be clear is where to download firmware. Now I know this is a fairly new product and I actually asked Foxeer if they would send it to me and they said no so I got one myself just to see what it's like and I don't think it's on par with certainly the Cadex Turtle V2 and picture wise definitely not the run cam split either but if you remember the first Cadex Turtle, that wasn't really that good either in terms of picture quality so I'm gonna give Fox here the benefit of the doubt and I think they could do some firmware updates maybe give us a little bit more bitrate and a little bit more clarity and I think they may be onto a winner especially the 30 by 30 and the 20 by 20 stack size the extra weight didn't seem to affect the flight time, so I got a three and a half minute flight time with a 4S 550 milliamp GMB battery. And the flight that you are looking at now was done with a 650 milliamp 4S GMB battery. And I got almost a five minute flight time with that battery, which is incredible if you think about it. And I didn't have to change the PIDs whatsoever so the pits that I came up with seem pretty solid for this copter so if you go back and watch the review then you can use the pids and add the mix and it will still fly absolutely superb with brutal power and I think the reason why the image isn't as sharp as its competitors is the bit rate isn't quite as high as its competitors. So for 1080p 60fps I would say 35 megabit is what you'd want to be looking at. And this is running at just below 30 megabit. So I think if they could up the bit rate and sort out the lens distortion in firmware then I think they'd be onto a winner. Maybe they lowered the bit rate to lower the latency. I didn't notice any latency when flying. Of course, there's going to be latency, but I think they get better and better each time that this technology is pushed, and I think that's the way that it needs to go. So I'm all in favor of it. Anyways, I will leave you with some flying, and if you enjoyed this video and found it useful and can afford to do so, I'll link to my Patreon in the below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.